When we get closer to actually delivering a child, oxytocin causes uterine contraction and that baby's head pops out and shifts her to become more aggressive, to become more vigilant, and to shift into caregiver mode. So that's where, you know, mama bear comes in. Once you deliver, then you enter the fourth trimester, another set of hormonal challenges, which sometimes I think is even harder than during pregnancy. Once you deliver your beautiful baby and you deliver your placenta, which is producing a lot of these hormones, your hormones go from sky high down to almost zero. So I remember when I was breastfeeding my first child and I was about three days postpartum, I felt so much bliss kind of looking down at my daughter and then I felt like this incredible sweating that took over me. And I, I thought to myself, I am having a hot flash. So it's very common for women to go through pregnancy and delivery and then to have a preview of coming attractions in perimenopause. There's some of us who are quite vulnerable to having such low hormone levels. You can't say the word that's on the tip of your tongue. You can't multitask. The brains of women who go through pregnancy after pregnancy actually experience some sort of remodeling. In a way, it's a little bit like what happens during puberty, that your brain is pruning, it's discarding neurons and synapses that it no longer needs. We're not losing our brains, we're just optimizing. We're getting rid of things and information that we no longer need to make room for all the demands and all the things that we're going to have to take on as new moms. Postpartum depression is real. It's more common than we care to talk about. About 70 to 80% of all new moms experience some form of baby blues or some form of anxiety perhaps in some tones of depression. But about one in every 10 new mothers experiences something more serious. A subset of women are exquisitely sensitive to kind of a baseline level of estrogen and progesterone. And so they need to have that baseline level to really feel their best. And then there's more serious diagnoses too. There are some women who have a psychotic break and we need help along the spectrum. When I think about the women that come to my office, many of them don't want to admit that there's a problem because it's supposed to be the happiest time you know, of their lives. You thought you would be happy, but you're not. You're not bonding with your child. The sooner a woman acknowledges that she's having trouble and the sooner she asks for help, the higher the chances of really completely reversing this condition. It's also important to know that experiencing postpartum depression might be an early sign of developing actual depression later on in life and usually during perimenopause or menopause. So it's really important to, to really talk to your doctor if you're experiencing any sort of depression after the baby is born. And really, once again, there should be no shame in this. You're not a bad mom, you're not a bad person. You just really need medical support or clinical support or the support of your friends and family, but you do need support. We tend to love and track that woman all the way through pregnancy, but the moment that child pops out is as if she doesn't matter anymore. And we have to remember she matters. After you have a baby, we really need to sleep, and we can't oftentimes. So many women go through a period of significant sleep deprivation, which harms our mood. Exercise, very important. I'm a big fan of listening to your favorite music, taking time out for yourself, whatever that may be. All of you is for the baby, and the baby gets your absolute priority. And I think it's so important for women to really be kind to themselves and really understand that your brain as well as your body needs a break and needs some help and support, and that there is no shame in that. It's just really nature that we need time to recover and to recharge after giving birth.